I heard a scream. Yeah, the scene, everything in this plane is hot. Everything in this plane is way too hot. I'm sitting on something, it's a camera, it's metal. Yeah, this is a great timing. Dan couldn't have done this in October. That's Marriott. gonna be, that's gonna be my, my, my whole video is like, my friend Dan made me <laughs> go straight for my check ride to multi-training. Oh, well, August. how else are you gonna get to the airlines? You gotta just get it done. Well, I'm doing ATP tomorrow. <laughs> This aircraft is a Beechcraft Baron BE-55. It's owned by a flight school called Aviator Air in Grand Prairie, Texas. This is the plane that me and two of my friends would be doing our multi-engine flight training in. If you've been following the channel recently, you know I uh, completed my commercial. Uh, I got that one knocked out and my plan was to take a little break and then go ahead and move on to the multi uh, so I could get my, my certification to fly twins. Uh, that was my plan. My friend Dan Milliken had a whole different plan. Uh, Dan is one of the genuinely most kind-hearted people I know. Uh, however, Dan uh, is very aggressive. He's very fast. He doesn't do anything halfway. And he called me up and he goes, Brian, he goes, we're going to do our multi-training. Uh, we're going to start on Monday. Our check ride's already scheduled for Friday. This was while I was preparing for my commercial check ride. What you're asking me to do is impossible. So I'm literally trying to study everything for the commercial check ride that was coming up in a couple of days. And then uh, Aviator Air, uh, the uh, flight school that we're doing the multi-training with, uh, sent this packet out and a pilot's operating handbook for the Baron. And uh, Dan said, I know you're studying for your commercial, but I need you to study for this at the same time. So uh, basically, study for, study for both check rides at the same time. It'll be fine. Um, what I did is what I typically do. I nodded and said, okay, Dan. And then I came home and I said, Absolutely not. No chance that I'm even going to open those books. I have to focus on the commercial. Um, I, I told my wife, I said, my friend Dan's gone crazy. He has check rides scheduled for us. Uh, I even called Dan and said, at one point I said, this, this can't happen, this isn't gonna work. Um, in my last vlog video about the commercial, I kind of spoofed a phone call about Dan trying to pressure me into this. It wasn't that far off the mark. Oh, it's Dan. I've got us scheduled for our multi-engine training at Aviator Air. Yeah, I would like to get the multi, as a, especially with the commercial add-on. I'm not, I'm not opposed to doing that. Give me, I don't know, two, three weeks, maybe a month. I just need to take this. No, has been in, no, it in, starts today. We have to be there by 5 p.m. We're gonna get- Absolutely not. I am, I am, there's no way. No, there's no time. We have to do it now. The check ride's already scheduled, scheduled for this Friday. Um, all this stuff was set in motion. Um, and, and the, the examiners were already scheduled and we hadn't even met them. I didn't even know anything about the plane or anything. So, uh, basically my plan was to, um, follow along, go through the motions. And then the day before the check ride, just say, Hey, I'm not ready. Cancel my check ride. Let them finish theirs. We got this fun video of us training together. And then a week or two later, I would go take my check ride. That was my mindset going into this. My mindset now is I might have waited a week before I jumped into the multi, but the way we did the training uh, was was awesome, and this is, this is how I would do it again. So um, before I jump into it, I wanna say this. If you want to get your multi-engine training, first off, if you have the ability to get near Grand Prairie, Texas, the experience with Aviator Air was fantastic. They're not paying me a dime to say nice things about them. I literally didn't think I could do this, and I think everyone should do it the way we did it. Uh, the keys to success for me, one, uh, our flight instructor was incredible. Uh, this young guy named Reagan, who's not working for hours to go to the, the, the airlines or whatever, he's like, his, his passion is seeing students accomplish their goals and he's really, really passionate about it. So um, he's in it with you. He's in it to be on your team. And it, it's such a, we're working together to get you where you need to be kind of feeling. So that was cool. The other thing I think was an amazing success was bring a friend. So my recommendation, if you want your multi, do accelerate it and bring a friend. I got as much out of sitting in the back seat watching Brant and Dan fly as I did uh, sitting with Reagan and actually flying myself. Okay, and we'll go all the way through the drill. Okay, all right. Whenever you're ready, you can bring that right throttle all the way back and then run the drill. Right throttle back. Okay, right throttle, maintain directional control. Okay. Okay, mixture rich, props up. Gonna identify left but if you can sit there in, in the back seat and watch someone fly and take notes, uh, I found that I was able to digest a whole lot more by going, okay, I need to do that, I need to do that, and now I've, I've seen it done. And uh, perhaps they make a mistake, and I've been making jokes about it. I just sat back and 
documented Dan's mistakes, but the, the truth is if someone makes a mistake and you see it and you take a note, it's like, okay, it, it kind of gets drilled into your head a little bit before you go and make the same mistake. So I'm a huge fan of the accelerated thing. I am a huge proponent of bringing a friend or a couple of friends and, and tag teaming it so you can work together. Uh, we studied together for the uh, oral portion and everything. What are you doing today, Dan? Good, good. What are we doing or how am I doing? Both. Well, I guess you're about the same. <laughs> Dude, it is only 87 degrees. I thought it was... It was 108 when Brant flew last night, so I'll take this. I forgot to bring a jacket. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so the Baron. Um, I don't know this twin from the Olsen twins. I don't know anything about twins. I've never flown a twin. I've always heard the old adage that if one engine quits, the other one will get you to the uh, scene of the incident. The Baron does not seem to be that way. This thing is a powerhouse. Um, I, again, my first twin, I, I, I've flown right seat in a couple of 310s. Um, there's another twin I've flown, I don't really remember, but this is my only time actually, you know, behind the, the yoke of a twin. Um, that thing has, has a ton of power. I mean, absolutely, it's two 260 horsepower engines. Um, and when you put those throttles forward, you can feel it. So uh, the first lesson really, was just getting acclimated to the airplane. Um, it's not too different panel-wise from what I fly. It's got a little bit of glass and a lot of steam gauges, which I kind of like. Um, the two throttles were a little interesting because on the ground, if they're not even, the plane wants to turn. And what I learned was you can't overpower the turning tendency of one engine with the rudder. So I can put the rudder pedal all the way down like I want to you know, turn right. And if I put that right engine full bore, the engine's going to win. So there's some finagling of, of trying to figure that out. And it takes a couple lessons of, of, of figuring out the taxiing um, and, you know, stop riding the brakes, stop riding the brakes. Something I've been hearing a lot recently I'm trying to work on. Um, but the, the, first, the first day was just kind of getting acclimated. And the benefit, I think, for me was coming just off the commercial check ride uh, is all I've been doing is training um, stalls and steep turns and basically the same things we'd be doing. So I'm, I'm in training mode doing these maneuvers. Now we're just adding a second engine. So, um, for Brant and Dan, it might've been a little different because they didn't just come out of that. So I think that helped me as well. How, how brutal is it going from your commercial right into your multi like this? I can't tell. Like my brain's mush because I've been, you know, all my numbers that I've been memorizing are for my airplane and all the, the stuff. So getting a piece of paper that's got all these new V-speeds, in addition to new V-speeds, which have new definitions because it's a twin. So uh, there's gonna be a lot of, um, I guess, cramming to try to get all this stuff in my brain. What is VYSE? Yeah, I know, that's that's the kind of question. No, what is that, it? Yeah, what is it? That's the important one. It's a VY on a single engine. Which okay. is the best rate of climb on a single engine. Okay, which is also referred to as what? Uh, I think that, I gotta go, this plane over here needs me. Airspeed's alive. Good. Everything's green. Gear lever identified, gear coming up. The first day was really about the three of us just getting acclimated to the airplane. We took turns in the front seat doing takeoffs and landings, steep turns, stalls, all of this just to sort of get a feel for the flight characteristics of the Baron.
All right, so we're here today at Aviator Air with Reagan, who was uh, the flight instructor that did uh, the multi-training for, for me and Dan. Um, so this is an accelerated twin training course that you're teaching at, at Aviator Air. So when I say accelerated, what exactly, are, we're talking about a compressed time frame, but, but how long typically does it take from I've never flown a twin until I'm walking out with my check ride? Right, so when we got here, I guess it was a Monday or a Tuesday, I believe. Mm -hmm. I guess most people started on a Tuesday, yeah, and then I check rides on Friday. I guess for you guys, it was y'all start on Tuesday and then finished on Friday. So that's about a three day span where we get in, never seen the airplane before, maybe most of the time haven't even sat in it. Yep. To get in your check ride and going and being capable and prepared for a multi commercial check ride in about three days. What's would you say is the average number of hours that it generally takes to get the rating? It's usually anywhere from five to ten hours. Um, I've seen it as low as. You know, five or six hours, and I've seen as high as you know ten or twelve. Okay. Um, really, this kind of training um, is first and foremost, it's expensive. <laughs> so, I mean, um, the as as minimal time as we can spend in the airplane mm -hmm. um, and get you prepared for the check ride is kind of what we're targeting. Yeah. Um, however, we'll do as much training as we need to get you proficient in what you'll be asked to do on the check ride. This is one of the um, only ratings in flight training that happen as happens as quickly as it does. Okay. Um, you know, most people have done private instrument commercial. Most people are coming um, mm -hmm. at the commercial level and they've done training for, okay, I, it took me 40 hours at least to get my private. Well, it took me 250 hours to get my commercial and they've had several days of training. Sure. A lot of hours on the ground and they have so much time to prepare. Whereas in this one, most of the time you're taking your check ride from anywhere from five to 10 hours. So we were doing, for the most part, I think it was two flights a day. Is that, so how we did it was we you know, do some ground, fly, do some ground, fly. For, for, for me, it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, check yes. ride on Friday. Yes. Yeah, so we, we were about as accelerated as it could go. And so if someone's watching this and they want to come to Aviator Air and do this accelerated uh, training to get their multi, what can they... Is there homework or something they can do beforehand to make sure that they're ready to hit the ground running? Or to, to, so what can yeah, they do? Absolutely. Um, this uh, type of flight training, it is critical that before we ever step foot in the airplane, you're comfortable with all the knowledge on the ground, um, the multi-engine aerodynamics, the systems, the speeds of the airplane, the, the drill, like everything that you're going to be asked to do in the airplane, it's important that you know it on the ground before we ever step foot in the airplane. Um, we do training in, in the Baron here and... Um, I mean, even if it wasn't a Baron, any other twin, things tend to happen a lot quicker. And if the first time you're exposed to the information is in the airplane, you're going to be behind from day one. Um, you mentioned the, the drill, and I've seen videos all over about the drill. So what is, what is the drill? Because it seems like the most important thing in twin engine flying with respect right. to staying out of trouble. Right. Yeah, typically, uh, I mean, in the multi-training, the, the biggest part of multi-training is not how the airplane flies on two engines. Yeah. Most of the time you get that down pretty quickly in, in the first hour of flying the airplane. Most of the time you're a commercial pilot already, you kind of know mm -hmm. how the flying works. It's more what do we do when we lose an engine or how does the airplane perform on one engine and mm -hmm. how can we best mitigate that risk sure. and um, hopefully fix the problem if, it, if you do have uh, an engine failure. Mm -hmm. So the drill is kind of a kind of a flow or a um, something that should be done that is second nature to multi-pilots that are, it's kind of the, what they do in the case that they, they lose an engine. I think the funniest thing about the drill to me is you can tell who's working on their commercial because at first I felt dumb, but then, you know, you're out there just miming it. Yes, you know? absolutely. <laughs> it's the five steps in absolutely. order. And I'm, I'm sitting at home and I'm just like eating dinner and I'm like, okay, I just need this to, I'm trying to make it muscle memory. Absolutely. There's okay. a good chance if I really got the situation, I'd just be pushing. <laughs> you just throw everything <laughs> as much as you can. Yes, exactly. One of the things I think if anyone is looking into getting this, this rating and, and doing, especially doing accelerated, Bring a friend. So I got, I would say this, and I don't think I'm exaggerating here. I think I probably got more value out of sitting in the back, watching Dan make mistakes, I mean, watching Dan fly <laughs> and uh, taking notes. No, but for real though, sitting in the back seat and watching someone get instruction and I'm, I'm writing the speeds down, I'm writing the order of things, I'm doing this. And then if someone does make a mistake and you correct it or whatever, you're like, okay, I'm already committing it. I'm not having to go through it. So I, I, felt, I feel like if you could pair up with somebody, I think that's the reason we got it done as quick as we did. I, totally agree. I think I would have needed three or four more flights if it was just you and me going up and me trying to figure this out 
and learn it while flying. Totally agree. Yeah, and yeah, y'all had that luxury to where you could go and watch, mm-hmm. and maybe see other mistakes or what someone else did well, and you're like, okay, I can take that with me into my training. Yeah. But whenever you're flying, and this is native to all flight training, whenever you're the pilot flying, there's so much going on at yeah. once. You're flying the airplane, and, and then the, the twin, you're you know maybe picking the gear up that you're not used to. Or, sure. Or you're you know adjusting the manifold pressure maybe that you're not used to. You're doing things that you're not, you're having to consciously think about. Yeah. And on top of that, you got me in the right seat screaming at you to do this, this, <laughs> this, this, this. So, I mean, you get, it's like, it turns into a juggling match. Sure. I mean, it, it's hard to juggle everything that you're having to do. So if you have the opportunity to sit in the back and, and watch, okay, this is what's going on. You can slow it down. You're not the one flying. Yeah. You can kind of slow everything down. It helps a ton. Yeah. No, I, I found it to be very, very beneficial. First thing was kind of getting acclimated, getting used to the this, this speed and some of the different behaviors of the aircraft. And then we started doing some maneuvers, some steep turns, some mm-hmm. stalls, um, the accelerated stalls. I, was, I want to compliment you. So as an instructor, my, one of my favorite features of an instructor is that they let you make a mistake. My favorite flight... Uh, you and I were doing the accelerated stall and you knew I was going way too fast Mm -hmm. and I'm pulling and I'm not hearing the horn and you're just letting me do it and do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I've flown with instructors that like, oh, and they stop, stop. But you, you'll, you'll let me do something and then go, so I wonder why that didn't work. And then we think through it. Well, for me, that's kind of how I learn. I'm not going to do that again. So I was like, I wasn't flying. I was flying too fast. So you had to pull harder to make it stall. And I was probably doing the widest turn. Around Dallas. <laughs> um, so I, I, I like your teaching style. So I, I thought that was cool. So after the normal procedures, we did the engine shutdown, secure and restart, which I've seen videos and photos on the internet of people flying with one engine. And so I thought, okay, it's not that big a deal. But when you actually get in the plane and see that engine stop, your blood pressure goes up just a little bit. First time most people have seen an engine not running in yeah. flight. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times that can be a little like, oh, crap. And so someone, you guys, it's not, I, this video is about twin because this is the rating I just got, but um, you you teach all, the, all your primary students, yes. instrument, everything, if they want to come to Aviator, what all, what, all, what all you guys do? Absolutely, yeah. So at Aviator, we do uh, private instrument, commercial, CFI, CFII, multi, MEI. We do um, all of those ratings. And you can do all of them in four days. Not quite. <laughs> I guess it depends. I guess it depends on how hard you work. Um, most of the time, no. Um, we do, yeah, all of those ratings. Um, me personally, I do um, private, commercial, multi, and MEI training. Okay. See if I, if, if needed. This yeah. worked out so perfectly. Absolutely. Um, and I, I, I appreciate the training. I appreciate all the hard work you put in. Put in so I'm very, very grateful that, that it, 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 it's a thank you off camera, Dan. <laughs> It was very, very good. Of course, the pleasure was online. And and thanks for the training. I appreciate it. Absolutely. No problem. So for this video, that's kind of the the first thing I wanted to do. Really just an introduction to the airplane, an introduction to the instructor. Uh, I'm going to either do one or maybe two more videos. Uh, I want to do a whole video focused on the single engine stuff. That is eye-opening stuff. So in the next video, we're going to focus specifically on the single engine maneuvers. And we're going to talk to the director who oversees this whole program and learn a little bit about you know, accelerated versus normal multi-training and the benefits and and how they structure it. Um, So I want to stop here just because I don't want to get into the single engine stuff as that is a whole uh, longer conversation. Um, But, you know, again, this is all filmed after the fact. Everything went well. I'm happy uh, where I am at now. And the best news ever, my plane has a small mechanical issue. So I'm forced to take a break uh, for about another, I think another week. And then we'll be back up to, uh, flying and hopefully, uh, having some, some fun again. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, uh, thank you aviator air for making this an awesome experience. Um, can't wait till the next video to dive into the single engine stuff. Uh, thanks for everyone who, who watches and follows the channel gold seal. Uh, I appreciate all the support. Uh, you guys fly smart. We'll catch you in the next one. Click this link to see the most recent video upload. Click this link to see a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Click this link to subscribe to my channel.